In this lesson, we will not talk about the lateral rotator muscles because we have explained that in our previous lesson. I have illustrated it in layers, one by one, so it's easier for you to understand it. This muscle did not belong to that group, and that was the gluteus minimus. However, it does do the lateral rotation though, it's just it's not his primary function. But now we're going to explain the abductors of the hip and the posterior compartment of the thigh. We're also going to explain the remaining two muscles from the gluteal region. Now let's get back and let's explain them one by one. My name is Faris and you're watching Animated Anatomy. So you see the muscle here and that is the pectineus muscle. It originates on the pubis on the pectineal line which looks more like this and it inserts on the femur on the pectineal line here. So you remember that pectineus muscle and the two pectineal lines. Besides adduction this muscle also performs the flexion and unlike all the other adductors it is not innervated by the obturator nerve but by the femoral nerve and once I'm done showing you these muscles I will also illustrate these nerves for you. Before we explain the next muscle let's mention that this linea here is the linea aspera and that is important because our next muscle is inserting on the medial ridge of the linea aspera. The origin of that muscle is the frontal side of the pubic bone right under the pubic tubercle. That muscle is the adductor longus. What's funny about this muscle is that in many textbooks you're gonna find that it does the medial rotation. Now obviously when you look at it from this perspective if this muscle contracts it's gonna make the femur rotate this way. However, it actually does the medial rotation, but only when the hip is flexed. Our next muscle is the gracilis muscle. It has the origin on the inferior pubic ramus and the insertion on the pes and serinus. Now, what is pes and serinus? Well, here you have the tibia from the anterior perspective and the insertion of the collateral ligament. Now, there where the collateral ligament inserts, you have the common tendon insertion for three muscles. One of these muscles is the gracilis muscle. The other two muscles that join the gracilis muscle to create the P. sansorinus are the sartorius and the semitendinosus. But let's not jump around with these names, let's go layer by layer and we're gonna get to these muscles in a minute. Besides medially rotating the hip, flexing it and adducting it, it also helps the flexion of the knee joint because the gracilis attaches to the tibia and not to the femur. The adductor magnus, the biggest adductor. It can actually perform the adduction, flexion and the extension. To understand how can this muscle perform flexion and the extension, we have to further analyze its origin. As you can see, the origin of this muscle starts on the inferior ramus of the pubis and the inferior ramus of the ischium. This portion of the muscle is called the pubofemoral portion and it performs the adduction and the flexion. The portion of the muscle that arises on the tuberosity of ischium is performing the extension. Join us in the next lesson to learn about the innervation of these muscles and the nerves to learn about the posterior compartment of the thigh and also about the muscles of the gluteal region. My name is Faris and this was Animated Anatomy. 
To purchase all my lessons and my software for anatomy, you can go to animatedanatomy.com. If you don't want to purchase it, then you can subscribe for more lessons like these in the future for free. Thank you.